Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. I am so excited to share today's video with you all. In honor of Hocus Pocus 2 coming out this year, I created a special Hocus Pocus themed Dollar Tree DIY video. I tried to include as many items as I could. We are going to be creating the iconic black flame candle, the spell book, decor items, and even a sweet treat. So be sure to stick around for the whole video. And before we get started, if you are new here, please do consider subscribing down below. I thought it was only fitting to start off with the black flame candle since that is what brings the Sanderson sisters back to life. I found this LED flameless candle at Dollar Tree in their candle department and they do tend to keep this one in stock year round. And I actually was pleasantly surprised with the glow of this one, especially at nighttime. And it comes with the batteries already in it, which is great. The other item that you are going to need is this free printable. So you guys can find this on my blog. I'm going to leave a link for it down below in the video description box. So once you head there, you can just print it out. And I have these two images here. So you can either just pick out your favorite or use both. That's what I'm going to be doing. And I did print mine out on cardstock, but you could probably just print this one out on regular computer paper as well. So to attach it to my candle, I actually just used a glue stick. I found that hot glue doesn't really work with these candles because they do have a wax coating on them, but the glue stick worked perfectly. So I glued my black flame label to the front and then on the back, I glued the image of the Sanderson sisters. Now for the last step, I'm just going to be painting that flame on the inside of the candle black with this black chalkboard paint from Dollar Tree. If you can't find this one, any black acrylic paint will do. And that is it. In a few minutes, you can have your very own black flame candle. DIY for the spell book will be coming up later on in the video. Next, we are going to be creating a Sanderson sister banner. I'm starting off with these wood ornaments from Dollar Tree. These are the witch hats. You get eight in a pack and we are going to be using all eight of them. And I'm going to be painting them with that same black chalkboard paint from Dollar Tree on the front and the back. And I like to use one of the foam brushes for this. I feel like it works the best and it gives it a nice even coat. And once those are all dry, we can get started on our tassels. You guys might remember when I did the Dollar Tree haul of all my Halloween items, I had asked you guys, what do you think this yarn is for? And so many of you guys guessed Hocus Pocus, you knew right away. And you were of course right. Tassels are super easy to make. All you have to do is just wrap a bunch of yarn around your four fingers until you get a big bunch just like this. Then you wanna trim it off, cut a smaller piece of twine, slide it into that loop, and just tie it into a knot up top. Now you kinda of wanna just pull it straight to make sure everything is going in the right direction. And then I like to pinch off the head up top here about a half inch or so to maybe three quarters of an inch. And then you want to wrap some more twine around that just to bind it in place. Then I just trim it and then I tie that into a knot as well. You can just trim off those extra pieces from your knot and then you're going to have a bunch of these loops on the bottom. You can just take your scissors now and just cut all of those loose. The next step is just to pull everything straight so you can give it a nice trim on the bottom to make sure it is even. Then I created six more tassels until I had seven in total. So two yellow, two purple, and then three orange. And now we are going to be needing some twine. This twine is from Dollar Tree. You want to cut your piece of twine for however long you want your banner to be. But I did want to show you guys how I like to finish off the ends of my banner. So I just take the twine, I basically just fold it over to create a small loop. Then I'm just going to pull that through into a knot and then trim off that extra piece. This is just how I like to create the ends of my banner because I find it is super easy to just put this loop on a command hook or just attach it to a nail or wherever I want to hang the banner. It's just a really nice way to finish off the ends of a banner. So now that we have that all done and ready to go, I'm going to take those strings that the hats came with and just loop them through and tie them into a knot so they are easy to hang. Now we can start to assemble our banner. So I'm starting off with a witch hat, then I'm going to add an orange tassel, followed by another witch hat, then the yellow tassel, another witch hat, and then the purple tassel. And then I just repeated the same pattern until I was finished. Just the tassel to the banner, I basically just used my fingers to create a hole and slide it onto the twine. And that is it. This is how it turned out. 
This one is so cute and it just honestly brings a big smile to my face. I love seeing those really fun tassels with the Sanderson sister colors. Step is another DIY using the same yarn. The other item you're going to need is either a wood dowel or a stick. So these wood dowels are from Dollar Tree. These will definitely work. I'm actually going to be using something a little bit different. These are plastic twigs from the brand Wilton. They're actually meant to go in apples when you want to create either candy apples or caramel apples. I thought that they would work really good for this. I'll leave a link for them down below. You can order some that are really similar from Joanne Fabrics or you can honestly just use a twig from outside. We are going to be creating a tassel the same exact way that we just did in the last DIY, but I did make this one a little bit thicker. So we are going to be creating some mini witch brooms. So I just wrapped around my finger a bunch of times, slid it off, and then I tied it together with an extra piece of twine, pinched off the head, and now I'm just going to wrap the head with some more twine to bind it, tie that into a knot, trim off the extra pieces and then finally we're just going to cut all of those loops on the bottom free with our scissors this diy is so easy and actually ended up being one of my favorites from the video so once i had all those loops on the bottom cut free i just pulled everything straight and made sure it was going in the right direction and then gave it a trim to make sure it was even on the bottom we have to attach our broom handle and again, I'm going to be using these plastic ones here, but you definitely don't need these. You could just paint these wood dowels a little bit darker or just use a small twig from outside. And all I did was actually just push it right through. I found that that binding actually held it in place really well and I was able to push it through to the bottom. But if you want to add a little bit of hot glue, you can definitely do that as well. And then I just repeated that same process with my yellow yarn and then my purple yarn, so I had a little broom for each one of the sisters. You can definitely stop here, but I had an idea to create some name tags, so that's what I did. This is going to be another free printable for you guys. Again, you can find it linked down below in the video description box. These are just on my blog. You can just head over there and print them out. And I did print these ones out on cardstock, and I would recommend that if you can, just because we are going to be hot gluing these in place and it is a little bit sturdier. I kept them a little bit longer in the free printable, but you can just trim them down to size after you glue them. That's exactly what I did. I just hot glued them in place and then I trimmed down each one just a bit. Having the name on each broom just adds such a special element to this DIY. Here is a closer look at how they turned out. You could glue these into a shadow box and display them like that. I think that would be so fun or just stand them up all on their own. This is probably how I'm going to have mine. And I thought it would be really fun to display them next to my little mini Sanderson sisters. So they each have their own broom. Next up is a two minute craft and we're going to be starting off with this five by seven frame from the Dollar Tree. And the only other thing you're going to need is this free printable. So I'm going to leave this one linked down below. You can find this on my blog and just print it out. I did print this one out on cardstock just because it is a bit sturdier, but you can definitely use regular printer paper. I chose to frame mine above the glass. That way I could avoid the glare, but you can definitely frame it behind the glass if that is the look you're going for. It's a really simple craft, but it definitely adds a fun element to your home decor. Next, we are going to be creating a life-size witch broom. So I'm starting off with two of these decorative mesh rolls from Dollar Tree. These are part of their Halloween arts and crafts decor. They do have some different colors in the fall section as well, so you definitely don't have to go with purple. And the other item you're going to need is one of the handles from the cleaning section at Dollar Tree. This is just that plain handle that you can use with the attachments. And this is going to act as our broomstick for our witch broom. So I just took that sticker off and then this little handle on the edge, you can just twist it a few times and it comes right off the pole. So you can unravel your mesh and I'm going to be cutting them into 20 inch pieces. So once I had my first piece, I just used that to measure the rest and I got five pieces of mesh that was 20 inches long from each roll. So I had 10 in total. 
The only thing I would say is if I did do this DIY over again, I would probably use three or four rolls of mesh. I think that would probably look a bit better in the final product. I just have them all stacked up on each other and I just cut a triangle shape into the bottom. Now I'm going to be separating them into two groups. So I had 10 pieces in total here. So I put five underneath my broom handle and then I'm going to be putting five on top. And we want that point, the triangle that we cut into the mesh to be pointing towards the top of the broom handle because we will be flipping it over. So once I had all of the ends together, I secured them in place with a rubber band. You just want to take the mesh and pull them down into individual strands and this is going to create the bottom of your broom. Once you have all of your mesh pieces folded down, you can kind of start to see the shape of the broom take place and we have that pole in the center still. And now I'm going to be creating the top of the broom by just holding that together in place and then using some twine to wrap it around just to create a binding. And then once I wrapped it around a bunch of times, I just tied it into place with a knot and trimmed off the extra pieces. I ended up pushing the pole down a few more inches that way it would basically go to the bottom of the mesh so when you stand it up on the floor it had something sturdy to basically rest against since this mesh is really lightweight. Now the last step is just to cover the top part of the pole with some twine that way it can kind of just match the bottom of the broom. So to start it off I just put a little bit of hot glue, push my twine into the hot glue and then wrap my handle up about four inches I would say and then to secure it at the top I added a little bit more hot glue and then just trimmed it. Here is how it turned out. You can even use tool instead of mesh to create this broom and I think it would be so fun to create three different brooms for a really hocus pocus look. Dollar Tree has a bunch of different colors of this mesh so you can get super creative and even use multiple colors in your broom. Step, we are going to be creating some really easy pillows and I'm going to be using two of these flower sack towels from Dollar Tree. The second I saw them, I knew they would be perfect for a hocus pocus video and I just love the sayings on them. So the one here has cauldrons and it says come in for a spell or two and the other one has a witch hat and it's really sweet. It says we all have a bit of magic in us. I've actually never used these towels before for a Dollar Tree DIY pillow. I've made quite a few pillows in other videos, but this is my first time working with these flower sack towels. And I have to tell you, they are my favorite. I love the way these pillows turned out. To assemble the pillow, I just opened up my towel and I folded it in half, but I did make sure the images were facing each other because we are going to be sewing this pillow and we want to make sure that we're able to flip it right side out after we sew the edges. Once I sewed along all four sides, I did leave a small opening on the bottom. That way I could turn it right side out. And once I had both of them turned right side out, I did decide to iron them. That way they were nice and crisp. Now we just have to stuff them and to do this I'm just going to be using some polyfill. I actually order my polyfill in bulk. I have a giant box of it. It just was the most cost effective and I got mine from Walmart. I'll leave a link down below for some options for polyfill. And once I had my pillows full, I just folded those edges in so we had a nice clean edge and I sewed it shut. And here is how they turned out. These have to be my favorite Dollar Tree DIY pillows ever. They're just so cute. I love the sayings. And the great thing about this fabric is that it is finished all the way around. So you can even turn the pillows over if you want a plainer look to them, just a more simple look with the cauldrons and the witch hat. Next up, we are going to be creating the Hocus Pocus spell book. The items you're going to need from Dollar Tree are a hardcover book, some Crayola model magic, Mod Podge, and some eyeballs. You're also going to need some hot glue, some paper towels, and paint. So I have some black acrylic paint. I also will be using a little bit of silver and I have some different shades of brown. I will also be using some gold poppy paint at the end for the stitches. 
If you pick up your Crayola Model Magic at Dollar Tree, it's going to come in a small package just like this. And you're going to need at least four or five of them for this DIY. What I did was just purchase this larger bag here since I figured I would need a bunch of it and it ends up being about the same price in the end. You can order this from Amazon or just find it at Target. The other thing I wanted to mention was these Dollar Tree eyeballs will definitely work for this DIY. You just have to cut them in half though, which can be a little tricky, but I would suggest using scissors and doing it carefully if you do choose to use that. Another option is just to create your own eyeball using some of the model magic, or what I'm actually going to be doing today is just using a plastic eyeball. These are some that I already had on hand from previous DIYs. These ones are from Amazon. I'll leave a link for them down below. They're pretty inexpensive and I decided to use the brown eyeball for the spell book today. The first thing you want to do is just make sure you take the dust jacket off of the book and use a marker to start to map out how you want your spell book to look. So for me, I mapped out where the eyeball was going to be. I also wanted to mark out the corners, the binding, and then basically any area that I wanted to create some stitches. You can look at a photo of the spell book to help with this, and it kind of just helps you figure out where everything is supposed to be. Next, I'm going to take a paper towel and basically just start to rip it to mimic where I mapped out where I want my stitches to be. So the spell book has that leathery look to it, and that is what our paper towel is going to do. So you wanna just create those pieces separately. That way you can glue them on and kind of create the ridges of where that leather is supposed to lie. And it's going to give it a really realistic look. To attach it, I'm just putting some Mod Podge down on my book and then pressing the paper towel into it. Once I had those in place, I took some more Mod Podge and put it over the paper towel. Once you have a full coat of Mod Podge on top of the paper towels, you can start to basically rip up the edges a little bit. This is going to give it a bunch of texture and really help to make it look realistic. So I'm just making an area here for the eye and then I just created some wrinkles with the paper and I also built up the ridges where I want the stitches to be when we're all done. Next, I'm going to be creating the decorative elements of the book with the Model Magic Clay. So the first thing I wanted to do was just create the snake that goes on the spine of the book. And it's really simple. All I did was just create a really long rectangle and then a pretty simple snake. Next, I'm going to create the latch for the eyeball. And all you have to do is just make an oval. And then I also made the snakes for the corners and five fingers for the binding of the book. You can use a toothpick to really make those decorative elements come to life. By adding some details now, it's going to give it so much more texture when we paint it. So I added some circles to the latch for the snake. I just want him to look a little bit more realistic and not so flat. So I just poked it ever so slightly right down the spine of it. And for the fingers, I added a bit of a ridge for the nail and then some lines for the knuckles. If you want to create your own eyeball, you can definitely do that now as well. That way you can paint it when you glue it to the book. But I'm going to be using this eyeball here. So to place it onto the book, I'm just going to be using some hot glue. Now I want to create a bit of an eyelid for the eye since that is how the spell book looks. And to do that, I'm just using some small pieces of paper towel. I just basically ripped it and now I'm going to attach it with some Mod Podge and then let that dry completely. And for the spine of the book, it basically had these arches that go right around the fingers. So to do that, I just mimicked the look with some paper towel that I rolled up and then also used Mod Podge again to glue it in place. So now everything is dry and ready to assemble. Before painting the outside of the book, the brown leather color, I wanna start painting black inside of those lines first. This is going to give a lot of the book and the pieces some dimension. Any of the areas that are a little bit deeper, I'm gonna go in with the black paint. After I finish with that, I want to paint all of the pieces that I'm going to be painting silver black first. 
So I'm starting off with the snake that is going to be on the spine of the book and then finally the corner pieces. For the fingers, I just mixed together some of that brown paint and I just kind of played around with it until I achieved the color I was looking for, which is just that really worn leather look. I'll be using that same color brown for my book as well. Now this is just going to be one of the shades we are using. After we get this base color down, we're going to be going in with some low lights and some highlights to really emphasize all of those ridges and really make it look like leather. Once that first layer of black paint was dry on the snake, I went over it with the silver paint. This is really going to make it pop and make it appear like it is made of silver. Next, I painted the latch as well as the two corner snakes silver as well. Once you let all of those pieces dry, you can start to glue them onto the book. So here is my book all painted. I did end up painting the back as well. And now I want to start gluing down those fingers on the spine. So I'm going to be gluing one finger in each of those arches with some hot glue. Next, I'm going to take some light brown paint on my paintbrush and just start to brush over some of those ridges really lightly. I just want those raised surfaces to pick up a little bit of the light paint. That way it can kind of highlight it a little bit. I don't want to go in too heavy, just very carefully over the whole book. Now I'm going to glue down my silver snake along the spine and then the two corner pieces. And finally, we can hot glue that latch around the eye. Now we have to add the stitches for the final piece. I found that using puffy paint works really well for this because it has a bit of a 3D effect and helps the stitches really stand up and look realistic. The gold is also a good color for this because it stands out against that dark leathery brown color. After I finished with the front of the book, I added some stitches to the spine as well, right around the fingers. And that is it. You just want to let it dry completely and you have your very own Hocus Pocus spell book. This DIY is so much easier than it initially feels. Trust me, once you kind of break it off into pieces, it really does come together and it is so fun to display in your home. Next is another super quick DIY that you can put together in just a couple of minutes. So I'm starting off with these two frames from Dollar Tree and a piece of black paper. This doesn't have to be black. You can use any color paper that you like. It's just going to be the background shade of the frame. So I took out that paper insert from the frame and just use it as a template. And now I'm going to be framing that black paper underneath the glass. And this is just going to be a nice plain background for us. The next thing you want to do is grab some window clings. So I found these ones at Dollar Tree and as soon as I saw the words Hocus Pocus, I knew it was going to be perfect for this video. So I'm going to be using, of course, the Hocus Pocus window cling, but I'm also going to be using the Trick or Treat one just because it kind of matches it with that pink color. Now you just want to add your window cling to the glass. It will stick to it perfectly. And that's pretty much it for this DIY. Like I said, really simple. And it does not have to be these window clings. This is just another way to display some fun window clings if you find ones that you really like. But I just love the Hocus Pocus and thought it would be perfect for this video. Now we are going to be making a really easy sweet treat. So I picked up this devil food mix at Dollar Tree. They have a bunch of different ones, but I just love the deep rich color of the devil's food cupcakes. And I'm going to be using some black paper liners for my cupcakes. So once you have your cupcakes already made, you want to get some buttercream. You can make some at home or just get some store bought one. Next, I just separated my buttercream into three different bowls and I made one yellow, orange, and purple with some food dye. Now I'm going to be using these disposable icing bags from Dollar Tree 
and these cupcake wrappers. I love those icing bags. I've used them before. They are phenomenal. Definitely pick them up if you see them in the baking area at Dollar Tree. Now I'm just going to ice my cupcakes. So for the yellow one, I pretty much just ice the cupcake as normal with a little swirl. For the orange one, I did a small swirl and then two little buns on the side. And then for the purple one, I just had a big swirl that kind of leaned a little bit to the right. So of course we are creating the Sanderson sisters here with that purple, orange, and yellow. How adorable, we have a Sarah, Winnie, and Mary. This is just an easy sweet treat to display and trust me, it will definitely be a fan favorite at your Hocus Pocus 2 viewing party. I found these little mini brooms at Dollar Tree and thought that they would be a fun accent for these cupcakes. And those are all of the Hocus Pocus DIYs that I have for you guys. I truly hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a big thumbs up. If you are not yet subscribed, please do consider subscribing. And if you did enjoy this video, consider sharing it with a friend. This video was definitely a labor of love. Hocus Pocus holds such a special place in my heart and I cannot wait for the new movie. Thank you guys so much for watching. To subscribe to my channel, you can just click on my picture right here.